My name is Kirsten Leach and I'm the program educator with NARP and I'm here today to talk to you about antibiotic resistance. NARP is the Northern Antibiotic Resistance Partnership, which is a group of people from Northern Saskatchewan, including doctors, nurses, lab people, educators, and community reps who came together to tackle antibiotic resistance. The group has people from all across the province, including people from the province, people from First Nations, and even a few from outside of Saskatchewan, including the University of Manitoba and Public Health Agency of Canada. So to start things off at the beginning, what are bacteria? Bacteria are little organisms or little creatures that are found everywhere in the world. And they're on bodies of all living things. They're even in the bottom of the ocean. Our bodies are all, always have bacteria on them and in them, and lots of them are very good for us. They don't cause any disease at all. These are called our flora. They help to keep the bad germs from taking over and making us sick. Bacteria are so small that we can't see them with our eyes and need a microscope to be able to tell that they're there. Now, there's also another germ out there called viruses, and viruses are cousins to bacteria. They're much more common, and it's either a bacteria or a virus that's usually what makes us sick when we pick up something. Neither bacteria or viruses can be seen with the naked eye, so just like bacteria, you need a microscope to be able to see viruses. If you looked under the microscope at bacteria and viruses that were sitting side by side, bacteria would look kind of bubbly and round and viruses would look really pointy and sharp. Now, what is antibiotic resistance? Well, antibiotics are a certain kind of medicine that you can be given by your doctor or nurse practitioner and they kill off bacteria. So, they won't just kill off the good bacteria in your body, but they'll kill off all of the bacteria in your body. Some of them kill off specific ones and other kill a wide range of them. So um, if you take an antibiotic that's going to kill a wide range of bacteria, then it also kills a lot of the good bacteria that are on and in our bodies. So the good bacteria that live on our skin and the kind that live down in our guts. And sometimes this lets the bad bacteria take over. And the bad bacteria are the kind that make us sick. So by taking antibiotics, we may think that we are going to get rid of an infection when in fact what happens is it lets the bad bacteria take over. And for women, an added bonus is that it can lead to people getting yeast infections. Antibiotic resistance happens when the bacteria are no longer destroyed by a certain antibiotic, which means that you take the medicine and instead of killing off the bacteria well, infection in the body, um, the bacteria just swim around in it and continue living. People call bacteria like this a superbug. Both good and bad bacteria can become resistant to antibiotics. Resistance can be transferred from one bacteria to another, even from good bacteria to bad bacteria. So this means that you can pick up an infection on your skin, which has some resistance, which means that it won't be killed off by penicillin, for example, and it can actually change the good bacteria that was living on your skin to being resistant as well. So taking antibiotics when they're not needed can make our bacteria resistant. This is why it's really important to limit the number of times that you take an antibiotic or that you go to the doctor and it's prescribed to your kids and family members and friends. Some kinds of bacteria are resistant to only one antibiotic and others are becoming resistant to lots of different kinds, which means it's becoming very difficult to find a drug that will kill them off. So what does it mean to you? Well, antibiotic resistance is getting a lot more common and if you or someone that you love gets a superbug or an antibiotic resistant germ, then doctors and nurses have to use stronger and all different kinds of antibiotics to kill off that bacteria. Some people have to go on different antibiotics that need to be injected into the body, which can be um, a little bit more painful, and other people get put on courses of antibiotics that take way longer than normal. So they can take, rather than just taking three days or a week, they can be on them for months and months or even up to a year. If bacteria become resistant to different kinds of antibiotics, then they become harder to kill and the bacterial infection can get much worse. And the big concern now is what's going to happen when we have bacteria that are resistant to all the antibiotics we have out there, which means we're going to have no drugs that can be given that will get rid of it. So where does antibiotic resistance come from? It's a new term that a lot of people haven't heard before and something that is fairly new in the health world. People can get it in two different ways. 
Number one is by picking up bacteria that are already resistant from someone else. So if someone that I know has a skin infection that's caused by bacteria, and that skin infection has antibiotic resistant bacteria as part of it, that's what's making it sick, and I rub up against it and pick up the same resistant bacteria on my skin that makes an infection, then what I'll have will be resistant. Another way to get it is by picking up regular run-of-the-mill bad bacteria that will make me sick and not taking my antibiotics properly. So what happens is that the normal bacteria that's on my body making me sick becomes resistant. They learn how not to be killed by an antibiotic. It's really important to remember that it's the bacteria that are resistant, not the person. So it's not that a person has antibiotic resistant bacteria, it's that the bacteria is resistant. So how do bacteria become resistant to an antibiotic? Well, resistance happens when an infection is treated with antibiotics and not all of the bacteria are killed. The ones that stay learn how to outlive that antibiotic and are not now resistant. So this is kind of like um, walking by a brother, for example, who's sitting on the couch and every time you walk by him and he punches you in the arm and you learn very quickly that you don't want to walk by him, right? Because he's going to do the same thing to you over and over. So you learn to take a different route. It's the same thing with bacteria. If they're given an antibiotic and they get sick or die from it, the next time they take that antibiotic, they're gonna learn very quickly how to live through it. So they become very, very smart. And that's where resistance comes from. Now, if we all take our antibiotics properly and at the right time, then this is not gonna happen. So people are uh, developing antibiotic resistance for a few reasons. Number one, is that they're not finishing their entire prescription when they're supposed to. So if the doctor or nurse practitioner writes you a prescription for an antibiotic and it says that you're supposed to take it for seven days, a lot of people will start feeling better after three days or four days and they'll think to themselves that they're cured and they'll put the rest of their antibiotics up in their medicine cabinet and save it for another time. This may seem like a good thing to do, but what's really happening is that some of the ba bad bacteria that was in their system got killed off, and it was enough of it that their symptoms are gone, but there's still some bacteria left. And these bacteria, they now know how the antibiotic is gonna try to kill them, and so they smarten up, so that if you take the antibiotic again, they're gonna live through it. So not finishing your whole prescription is a very dangerous thing to do. The second thing is not taking the proper dose at the proper time. It's, again, common for people not just to have to take the antibiotic once a day, but sometimes people are supposed to take it three times a day. And it can be an inconvenience, even though it's the best thing to do. So what some people will think is, rather than taking it breakfast, lunch, and supper, I'm gonna take all three of my pills in the morning and be done with it for the day. Now, this doesn't always work, because sometimes the bacteria need to get that regular zap of antibiotic a few times which means they're not gonna die properly. I see this a lot with parents who get an antibiotic for their kids, especially for babies, and think to themselves, you know, the amount that I'm supposed to give seems like such a big amount of medicine. I'm gonna cut it in half, or I'm gonna give it when it's more convenient for me than what the doctor said, and so they don't treat their kids properly or the way that they've been told to treat the kids, and this can lead to antibiotic resistance. Another thing is taking someone else's prescription. Now, of course, this should never happen if all of us finish our prescriptions the way we're supposed to every single time. You should never have leftover antibiotics. But sometimes people do because they haven't been following the rules. And, you know, your aunt had a cough or a sore throat, went to the doctor, got a prescription, took three days worth, felt better, and saved the antibiotics in the medicine cabinet. And then your uncle, starts getting the same sore throat a few days later, and so he reaches into the medicine cabinet and thinks, you know what, sore throat, I'm gonna take exactly the same drug. Now, just because he has the same symptom doesn't mean he has the same infection. Plus, he's not getting enough of the antibiotic, right? Because both of them are only taking half a course. So taking someone else's prescription can be really dangerous, because now the aunt and the uncle have both probably had some of their bacteria killed off, and not enough to do enough good, so both of them could have antibiotic resistance now.
The last thing is taking antibiotics when they're not needed. And a lot of people probably think, well, this isn't going to happen if I only ever take them when my doctor gives them to me. But a lot of people pressure their doctors and their nurse practitioners into giving them antibiotics even when they're not needed. So it's really important whenever you get sick and whenever you go into the doctor or to your nurse practitioner that you always ask if whatever is making you sick really needs an antibiotic because you don't want to take them if you don't need them. Now one of the more common kinds of bacteria that causes skin infections is called Staphylococcus aureus. And those of us in healthcare call them staph infections. And staph is found on the skin and up inside the nose and in the throat of a lot of healthy people. And it sits in there and doesn't cause any problems at all. But in some people, or sometimes, it'll start causing an infection. And we see staph infections a lot on the skin. So you might have a little open sore or something that looks like a little pimple. And the most common cause of that is a staph infection. Um, if you do have something like that, a uh, sore on your skin, the most important thing for you to do is to make sure that it doesn't get any worse and that it doesn't spread. So very important just to keep it clean. So cleaning it with soap and water quite a bit. And um, if it's oozing anything or if it doesn't have a scab on it, then to make sure you cover it with a Band-Aid or a bandage of some kind.